Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Hard Lover by Deborah Garland. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter One, Callie Rose. Have you ever considered going to one of those sex clubs here in town? I looked up for my near empty drink of Crown with Coke and caught my friend Desi looking at me like I was crazy. I think my boyfriend might take issue with that. Desi said, and Desi and I were in the same graduate school program, but she lived off campus with Connor. I, I meant before him. I wasn't interested in dating anyone, but a girl still had needs, even virgins. I snuck a book. I snuck a look at myself, realizing I dressed like a virgin with my frilly top, knee length denim skirt, and pink sweater. No, that's for men who just want to get off. Easy for Desi to brush it off since she was getting some regularly. With a boyfriend to go home to, her high neck maxi dress was appropriate. Why can't we use guys to get off too? Even in a Houston bar with sexy men and cowboy hats all around me, my besties and I drinking the night away, restlessness, restlessness coiled inside me. I was ready to get on with my life, which included working full time as a social worker, living on my own, and supporting my mama when she got out of prison. Yeah. People raised their eyebrows when I threw that one in, especially men when they asked about my goals and dreams. Some excused themselves to go to the bathroom and never came back. And that was without mentioning my father, who also sat in a prison cell. Because the kind of man you'll want to marry will want a good girl, Desi put Southern Bells to shame. Ugh, marriage was the the furthest thing from my mind. Rue, another grad school friend, returned to our table and plopped down three shot glasses of golden fire. Okay, I had to practically show my boobs to get us another round at the crowded as fuck bar, but here you go. Cheers! She downed her shot, jiggling in a strapless top that made flashing people easy. Hmm. Rue, have you ever considered going to a sex club? I asked. Her eyes peeled open like I mentioned the bank was handing out free money. No, but I'm down for anything. What do you have in mind? We had one more week without classes. A bunch of international students had been moved into my dorm for the long holiday break, and I'd been entertaining them. Being a dorm supervisor at Magnolia University paid well, but when the housing department had offered a big bonus to stick around during the break, I ate up those free money signs. Uh, I'm just talking. I lied. It'd been on my mind for a while. We'll talk some more, girl. Rue jumped up and down her boobs, bouncing dangerously in her tube top. Sounds like fun. She'd probably be popular in a sex club. Have either of you heard of a place called The Stable? I looked at Desi, then Rue. Desi choked on her shot, leaving me curious about what she'd say. Uh, my uncle's the bouncer there. We're not supposed to talk about that place, seeing we're good, seeing as we're good Christians and all. She kept her face even and then burst out laughing. I laughed, too. All I knew about the stable was my older brother had been a member. Not anymore since he got married. I swallowed a lump, thinking of Grant's best friend, who also used that place to get off. Noah Archer. The guy I had a crush on forever. A guy who I knew wouldn't ever touch me because of my brother would beat the piss out of him. Noah and all those good old boys were just looking for no-string sex at the stable. Well, this good old girl needed to find a man who'd be rid me of this V card. I didn't care anymore about it being with someone special. To me, that was Noah. The man stood well over six feet tall with gorgeous blue eyes, wide shoulders, and a swagger that screamed fantastic in bed. My body heated up, wondering if he was at the club tonight. In the six years since I'd met him, I'd been making a fool of myself to get him to notice me as a woman. No dice. Desi, is your uncle working tonight? I asked. She shrugged. It's Friday, so I assume so. Grabbing my wristlet, I hopped off my stool. Let's go. What? Rue bounced off hers right after me. Rolling her eyes, Desi finished her drink. Connor is going to kill me. I doubt it. I hugged her shoulders as we walked out. I think he'll be intensely turned on. I hoped Noah would be aroused if he were there and saw me with those eyes that always got to me and saw me as more than his best friend's little sister. Besides being as hot as hell with his voice like honey over gravel, Noah was a strong, decent man. Whenever Grant needed him, he'd been there. At 31, with Houston sun-weathered skin, he had that hot, mature guy thing going on. He had a great sense of humor and served as an army ranger. Why wouldn't I want him? And why wouldn't Grant approve of someone like that for me? 
Some ridiculous bro code had gone too far, if you ask me. Noah's new job with Grant doing special security on campus was on hiatus for another week, so of course he'd be at the stable. But that meant he'd be prowling to hook up with a woman. Why not me if I promised to keep it a secret? <sighs> My brother is going to kill me, Desi's uncle snapped off a velvet rope to let us into the stable. The standalone red barn-shaped building had a gritty horse head on the roof that could be seen from the highway. Thank you, Uncle Holt, Desi had sworn she was just there for me and Rue. Sal, I'm going to get these ladies settled. I'll be right back. Desi's Uncle Holt led his partner outside the club and brought us to a high top table in the bar area where a pr very pretty blonde in shorts and a t-shirt came over. Hi, Aunt Catherine, Desi said, waving and looking embarrassed. At what, though, I wasn't sure. That her 40-something uncle had married a woman who looked to be our age or that we found our way into a club he didn't want anyone to know about. Holt, what is she doing here? Cat asked, looking horrified. Your brother is going to kill you. I told her that, Holt shrugged. We talked him into it, I spoke up, glancing around at all the scantily clad women hanging on ravenous-looking men in cowboy hats. The amber lighting didn't add to the seductive mood, but the dance floor under neon lights and slow music had couples getting very handsy. Keep an eye on them for me, Cat, Holt kissed his wife and sauntered off. Okay, girls, you listen to me. Cat put her hands on the table. Desi, earmuffs, little girl. I can't get a call from your mama. When Desi comically covered her ears, Cat spoke fast. The owner of this place, Lindsay, loves women who take the same as a man. But the men here, they're rough girls. They want women who know how to please a man a certain way. Y'all don't look like you can handle a rough cowboy who will use a rope and toys on you. Promise me you won't go off with anyone. I shivered with excitement, hearing ropes and toys, and wondered what the heck else really went on here. Shit, what if Noah didn't like me being here? And told my brother. I shook that worn-out fear of Grant's overprotecting us away. I was 24, a grown woman, and if I wanted to get it on with a man I couldn't stop thinking about, it was my right, damn it. I promise, Rue said, looking concerned about Kat's warning. Yeah, sure, I would never go off with a stranger, so I didn't mind promising. Taking smaller glimpses all around, a set of wide blade glass panels caught my attention. What are those? Kat looked over her shoulder and then drawled. Those are none of your business. Now I had to know. Come on, please. Rolling her eyes, Kat said, It's a new thing here. In the last couple of months, Lindsay really upped her game in this business. Other clubs were giving her fierce competition. Those panels look into the voyeur suites. Voyeur suites? I felt my nipples harden against my lace bra. As in peep show? Cat nodded reluctantly. Staring off in that direction again, I noticed chairs and sofas set up in the front of the panels. We just go down there, have a seat, and you don't do anything. Aunt Cat, they can have fun. I promise I'll stay put. Desi stuck, stuck up for me. Can you bring me a Coke? I'll bring three Cokes. Can you add some Jack to my Coke, please? Bruce said with a smile, reaching into her purse. We can pay for our drinks. Sitting up taller, I said, for me too. We are legal. Fine. One shot each. Cat shook her head and strolled to the bar. Bet the liquor here cost a fortune and perhaps one shot was all I could afford. Scanning the bar area, I didn't see Noah. Given the time of night, he may have already been in a sex room or a private suite I'd heard about. My eyes stayed on the glass panels. Three separate ones with dividers in between meant three couples could be going at it at once. Cat brought our drinks and we clinked our glasses. Here's to a new experience, Rue said. Here's to getting my ass beat by my daddy and my boo, Desi threw her shot back. Here's to... My words died in my throat when a red light went off and started swirling over one of the glass panels. A collective yelp of excitement chimed throughout the bar area. Several couples got up from their tables and cl claimed seats in front of that particular voyeur suite. Oh God, two people were about to have sex in one of those rooms made of glass. Rue, keep Desi company. I'm checking this out. I downed my shot and ambled that way too. A hollow feeling spread through me, seeing I was the only single person in the small crowd that had formed. 
With the seats filling up around me in the dark sunken pit, I snagged a seat up front. The only lighting came from different neon colors glowing on, on and off into the crowd. On the sides of each panel divider were speakers. Smoke-colored translucent shades blocked their bodies. For now, I only heard what was going on. It sure sounded sexy enough, mouths on skin, moaning and low talking. Dirty talking from what I could make out. That's right, be a good girl and suck my cock. I froze, recognizing the voice. Noah. Horrified, I turned to leave, but all eyes in the viewing pit landed on me. I thought of what Kat had said about the women who came here, ones who could please a man with certain needs. If I crept away, the women watching me would think I was weak. I'd love to explain to them that the guy asking for his cock to be sucked was the man I'd had a crush on for six years. How could Noah do this in front of people? Unless this kink was just as much for him as for his audience, which now included me, but he didn't know that. One by one, each man pulled his woman onto his lap and pushed her down to the floor in front of him. I found myself in a cornucopia of public groping and dry humping. When the cowboy next to me pulled out his dick and his lady friend for the night fondled it for him, I turned back to the glass, quickly. I didn't come over here to watch them. But did I want to watch Noah with another woman? No, not really, but a wicked curiosity kept me frozen in place. When I fuck you, you come when I say, you understand me? I didn't hear a response. Oh, right, the girl had a mouthful of cock. The full view was still fuzzy, and I assumed that added to the suspense. Thrill. Until the translucent shades gradually rotated and exposed the couple behind the glass next to a made-up bed with black satin sheets. Even if the voice had played tricks on me, I knew that body immediately, and I questioned why I stayed in my seat. Maybe years of knowing Noah used a sex club like the stable had dulled the shock value of what I was witnessing. Plenty of nights I touched myself imagining him here, wishing it were me, wishing he wanted to make me mindless and boneless with his hands, his mouth, and that cock I pictured in my head all these years. I developed a bit of a porn-watching habit, which taught me a lot. Noah stood up straight, holding some blonde woman's head with only her bare back and round behind visible. His stark, naked body glowed in all its frontal glory. I gasped, taking him in. What I imagined he'd looked like under those tight button-down shirts and ass-hugging jeans hadn't even scratched the surface of my obviously limited imagination. With wide shoulders, he looked firm and solid, cut with planes of abs and angled pecs. One of those tribal tattoos trailed down one arm. I found asymm asymmetrical tats very sexy. Staring at the woman going down on Noah and the way he smiled at her, my throat tightened. I'd reached my limit and couldn't watch anymore. Didn't want to. With the couples around me occupied, I felt I could sneak away. A sharp gasp had me looking up suddenly. My heart stopped seeing Noah glaring right at me. Me. While a woman sucked on his cock, the whole image took on a different meaning now that he knew I was there. Arousal ferociously seared through me. I waited for Noah's face to change from shock to something else. Anger, which might be hot. Give the girl an angry fuck in front of me because I dared to tread on his turf. Noah's eyes widened and a sinister smile curled his lips while he stared at me. Holding the woman's face, he forcibly drove his cock deeper into her mouth. Harder. I really couldn't see his cock with the woman sucking on it. His hips moved back and forth while his chest expanded up and down. He looked to be enjoying himself, though. God, what did that kind of pleasure feel like? Another person's hot mouth on you down there. Noah kept his eyes on me. No matter what I did, I couldn't break the connection, and I didn't want to. He needed to know, despite whatever stupid best friend pact he'd made with Grant, I was a woman who made my own damn choices. My choice now was to touch myself while watching a man I was crazy about have sex with another woman, even if that were a batshit crazy decision. The whole point of these seats was to get off while watching someone else. Noah picked the woman up and put her on the bed. The black metal headboard with a few crossbars banged against the glass. I guessed that was no design flaw. Smiling at me, he wrapped the woman's legs around his waist. Yeah, fucker, man, a male voice behind me grunted. Made me wonder if Noah could hear us. By his lack of reaction, I figured not. 
He reached down and took a wrapped condom in his hand. He tore it open with his teeth, all while looking at me. The woman reached up to grab his chin so he'd look at her, but he gently put her hand down. With the woman out of the way, I finally saw his cock. Hell's bells. Again, my imagination had failed me, but Kat's warning had been spot on. I didn't think I could handle such a long, thick cock. Something metal shined in the light. Holy shit, his cock was pierced. Several shiny barbells sat underneath the shaft. Damn, it was the sexiest thing I'd ever seen. Noah handed the blonde the condom. The woman sat up and all I saw was the back of her head. It hit me like a smack to the face. The color of her hair was nearly identical to mine. Champagne blonde, according to my stylist at the salon, who always gushed at my hair. The woman who bore a haunting likeness to me from behind rolled the condom on Noah's cock. How it covered all those barbells fascinated me. Still watching me, Noah gently pushed the woman down. With her head out of the way, I made out more tattoos etched in his hips. Large calligraphy, skip scripted letters read freedom and honor. I let the meaning behind those words wash over me when a different male voice called out. Come on, man. Fuck her already. With the woman laid out and running her hands over Noah's chest and abs, he jerked himself off. My own arousal burned hot, especially since he knew I was watching. Noah's gaze lowered, finding my hands fisting my skirt. When our eyes met again, he nodded to me, lifting his lips in a sneaking smile. I spread my legs and slipped two fingers inside my lace panties, shocked at the heat and wetness there. My pussy clenched from just the feather light brush against the smooth skin. Noah narrowed his eyes on me like he wanted more. I fingered myself, wishing it were his hand. Even that didn't appear to be enough for him. With my heart pounding, I pulled the lace to the side and showed him what no other man had seen. A shot of adrenaline raged under every inch of my skin. Noah mouthed some unknown words of praise, then leaned down and gripped the top metal bar of the headboard. I could tell by the way his eyes fluttered that he'd entered her. Miraculously, I felt it too, even though I used my own fingers. The woman reached up and clawed at his shoulders, but Noah grasped her hands and held them in one of his like he didn't want her to touch him anymore. It wasn't her and him right now. It felt like the sex was between us, Noah, and me. His hips slammed into her again and his again and his face flushing. I rubbed my clit with the same rhythm. The gentle moans around me meant everyone was having some kind of sex watching this. Did they notice he only looked at me? I felt isolated in a bubble, and even though Noah screwed another girl, I imagined him standing in front of me. In my mind, he crouched down and rubbed my clit with his long fingers instead of doing it himself, and doing it myself. With every stroke, I got wetter. I lost track of how long we stayed like this, but as soon as I felt myself slipping over the edge, Noah began going faster and faster like he knew I was close by the look on my face. He was fucking her, feeling her push, pussy, and yet I was ready to come. His devilish smirk with beautiful white teeth gnawing at his lower lip did me in. My entire body flushed hot and electricity coursed through me. Every inch, every cell. I shuddered, unable to breathe, climaxing, stifling a moan, squirming in the seat. Noah finally broke eye contact by squeezing his shut and roared. His voice reverberated against the glass. Holy shit, that was loud, a woman near me said. Quivering and breathing heavily, I waited for Noah to open his eyes. His body trembled like mine. He licked his lips and leaned back. Getting off the bed, he ignored the woman reaching out to him who maybe wanted more. After snapping the condom off and tossing it, Noah stalked up to the glass naked, his cock visibly throbbing. Each barbell danced, pulsing. What would that feel like inside me? Oh my God, I heard myself mumble. What in the hell did I just do? Pulling my hands out of my panties, I considered wiping them on my skirt. Noah stood there stock still, letting everyone take in his body, all while he stared at me. The woman had gotten off the bed and bounded out of the room like she didn't care. With one arm against the glass, Noah brought his other hand up and licked his fingers, urging me to do the same. Feeling obedient by some pull I never felt before, I did what he wanted, being extra graphic with my tongue. Like something shocked him all of a sudden, Noah staggered back. He glanced down at himself, stark naked with a leaking, pierced cock on display for me to see. Me, his best friend's little sister. I finally looked away, only glimpsing around me briefly. Each couple was engaged in some kind of sex. Nothing I cared to watch. I'd seen enough. 
With shaky legs, he, I trekked back to the table to see Desi and Rue sitting there with stunned looks on their faces. That was hot, Rue said. Were you in the crowd watching that couple? With so many people in that sunken pit in front of the panels, I figured my friends couldn't see me. Yeah, that was some scene. I couldn't bring myself to admit that they, the man they watched having sex was the man I'd been crushing on for six years. Or that I made myself come watching him. I wondered if Noah would appear in the bar area any minute. Would he come looking for me? Could I face him? Would he want me for his round two? Hell no. I was no one's second choice. Let's get more drinks. I need to forget this ever happened. <laughs>